The Pirates took three out of four from them. Now they got the Cubs coming into town. Again, these games don't really mean much in the sense of playoffs, right? But you still want to finish out the year strong. Henry Davis is getting called back up. The Pirates have the Cubs coming in. And, of course, any Pirate fan just wants you know the Cubs to just have misery in their lives. So this is a pretty interesting series. And I say that also to the fact of the pitching matchup. There's going to be someone making his return. It's not official, official, but like it's it's unofficially official. The Pirates are going to have the three dogs out there once again: Mitch Keller, Paul Skeens, Jared Jones, all up there to face the Cubs at home. So I guess again, like for a non-playoff contending team, this is probably as exciting of a series as you can get. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get better than these three guys. Like these are the. These are your three horses. These are the three guys that made this team even watchable the first first few months of the year when the offense was was struggling mightily. It was it was Keller, Jones, and Skeens kind of getting us through that time. Um, and and yeah, I mean, obviously excited to see Keller, Keller and Tyone on Monday, uh, but Tuesday, yeah, return of Jared Jones, and yeah, it's been it's been a while. Uh, July 3rd was the last time Jared Jones started uh, and he went five innings, gave up just one run. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, post post injury post, um, you know, rest Jared Jones. Cause it, it did seem like he was, you know, kind of running out of steam there at one point. He had a couple rough starts in a row. Um, he, he finished with a, couple really good back-to-back starts for landing on the il so yeah hopefully he picks right off picks right up where he left off um i think uh yeah he was electric when he was on so just being able to add that to your rotation when you're trotting out jake woodford or domingo herman being able to take one of those guys out of the rotation and replace them with jared jones you you love that absolutely love it absolutely love it and again, I think just going back, not to go too deep into this, but you know, we're talking NS9 Live. You know, how he finishes the year is going to be pretty important. I mean, he's going to get more innings under his belt. So you're looking at 2025. That's something you want to have under him, right? Uh, and yeah, like just uh, that, that feel good. You know, he was having such a good season. It got cut short because of injury. But like you mentioned, I don't think he was trending towards possible like rookie of the year status where, you know, the first month you, you were talking about that. Hey, like this could happen. You know, he started day one. Maybe he gets rookie of the year, and that didn't really quite happen. But that's fine. You know, if he can finish the season strong, still, that bodes well for him. And he finishes the entire season, gets a full year of service time. Cool for him. Um, but but yeah, and it all starts. It all starts. You know, tomorrow more or less against the Cubs against Justin Steele. Look, so it's also a very very tough matchup. And it's one thing the Cubs have too. They're not going anywhere this year, but like their starting pitching has been pretty strong. And going to start with Tyone, which, by the way, wasn't it Mitch Keller versus Tyone the last time, too? Like, those guys just match up with each other every time they play, I think. Um, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I know Skeens and Hendricks were last time, too, because I think it was, like, the first time in the StatCast era where the hardest throwing pitcher faced oh, the, right. the slowest throwing pitcher. So you'll get you'll get that again this week. That's right. So it seems like the matchups are pretty much identical. But yeah, like Mitch Keller and Tyone, two really good pitchers going at it. Old Pirates friends. And then Justin Steele versus Jared Jones. A couple electric guys. And then, yeah. And then it's Paul Skeens versus Hendrick. So I'll say this. I am at least betting one game that the Pirates win at least. <laughs> like that one. If, if Paul Skeens can't defeat Kyle Hendricks is what it's at. Um, yeah, that rookie of the year ain't happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, the rookie of the year all of a sudden. The offense has to show up still, but yeah. Rookie like of the year all of a sudden also kind of, um, you know, kind of weighing in the balance. Of, uh, Jackson Merrill has been just outstanding lately. Uh, he had a walk-off homer yesterday, his second walk-off homer of the year. 
I saw he's had five home runs in the ninth inning. Jackson Merrill, just ridiculous. He's uh he's been very, very good. Um, Paul Skeen's also been very, very good. So it's gonna be interesting just down the stretch to see how that shakes out. Um, you know, is do, do you do you go with the everyday player who's having a really good season, or do you go with the pitcher who missed the first month and a half, but since arriving has been the best pitcher in baseball? So it's like there's there's two really good options. I think I think you still got to go with like the guy who's been better than every other person in the league. Like I feel like that's just what I would do. But yeah, we'll see. Um, I think Vegas has Merrill as the favorite right now, but it's it's like barely. So, but yeah, no. Uh, the the Cubs. I mean, just you mentioned Justin Steele. I feel like when we ran into him last time, he wasn't pitching all that well. Mm -hmm. like he he kind of started off the season a little rough. Uh, but he's been pitching outstanding lately. So, you know, his his ERA is down to 307. So, like, you kind of look up and, you know, I, I thought he was having a, a shaky season and it's just as good as it's ever been for Justin Steele. So, you know, he's kind of rebounded his season. Hendricks definitely still, you know, struggling. Uh, he, he has not had a good year. You got to wonder how many more, how many more starts he even has in him before you know, before retiring, because it has not gone well for him. Um, but you joked up about the other teams, Starbucks, right? Whether we be talking about, you know, about yeah. the Pirates Farm, right? like every, if this was the Chicago Cubs version of Starbucks, right? Well, we would be going ballistic right now. Like, how is Hendricks even on this team? <laughs> so I, I thank the Cubs for allowing Hendricks to still be on their team. Yeah, I wonder how that is though, because the one thing that the the Cubs, the one thing that Hendricks has going for him, he's I think he's the one hold holdover from the World Series team. I think cool. he's the only player on the Cubs who was who was in that. So I don't know. You kind of think you got to hold him, you know, near and dear to your heart a little bit if you're a Cubs fan. Like even at with this disaster of a season, it's like yeah, but you know, he helped us win a World Series. It's like if Andrew McCutcheon was struggling, like we'd still, we still love Andrew McCutcheon. N n no. Cause Hendricks All right. You're right. Even Kyle Hendricks. He's... Kyle Hendricks isn't the Cubs version of Andrew McCutcheon. You're right. Right. Um, but you know, the dude's been on their team for 11 years. It's been an 11 year Chicago Cub. He's won a lot of games, won a world series. He's won an ERA title. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how, how I'd feel about that. I've never had to experience that. I've never, I've never been like, Hey, how's the, how's the old guy from our world series team? How's he doing? I've, I've, I've that, that thought has never crossed my mind. So I have no idea what Cubs fans are thinking right now. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's bad. He's been really, really bad this year. Then 101 innings for him. He's got a six, three, three ERA, uh, much not the same as Paul Skeens, who has about the same innings pitch in a 2.16 ERA. So, yeah, that's the uh, the last game of the series. But at any rate, like the Cubs team is, I mean, technically they're better than Pirates right now. Uh, but the starting pitching is been really, you know, really strong for them. The bats is, you know, whatever, the relievers, whatever. They've been getting by by the starting pitching also. Um Two out of three matchups seem very, very evenly matched. And then, of course, the one at the end favors the Pirates, obviously. So I think it's going to come down to, you know, a lot with the offense and which bullpen can can hold the lead or not. Yeah, and I mean, Pirates bullpen, they've just been, they're shaky. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they're not. It just kind of depends on the day. Um, depends on the player, too. Like, they're just... They're just not consistent. The one thing that no. they're consistent on is how shaky they can be. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. The the they are a model of inconsistency. There it is. Absolutely. Outside of like Dennis Santana, oddly enough, I can't. I don't think I I can give him enough praise at this point in time. He's been and yesterday too, just proving that he's been he's been clutch. But the problem is, the next time that you need him. He's going to be that guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's 100%, right? Like, that's right. What I expect. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you got the. Allow me to indulge here, Donardo. The Pirates are what? 62 and 68. 
What if they sweep the Cubs? Which, with this pitching lineup, like it's possible. Then you're 65, 65 and 68. All right, stay with me. I haven't even looked at this standings for two weeks now, so I need to. Because here's the thing. If you can get, if you can sweep the Cubs and then just like hold your own against the Guardians, win one of three against the Guardians, then you've got Cubs, Nationals, Marlins. Ten game stretch. Ten game stretch against the Cubs, Nationals, and Marlins. You have an opportunity to somehow climb back into this thing. I'm not. I'm not saying like you're going to make the playoffs, but they have a chance here to at least make things interesting again. If they can reel off some wins against some some not great teams. Pit City White here says, "Don't you dare, Jim." Yeah. Mitch, Jeff, I'm not, if you I'm are not listening saying, right now, I'm not, I'm not saying anything yet. Please anything go in yet. on this man. <laughs> but 13 out of the next 16 games are against bad teams. Right. And you yourself are a bad team. So <laughs> the odds are you might break even. <laughs> Listen. Listen, but. listen. Uh, playoffs are done. The, the playoffs are done. But I will give you this. It's much like last year. They they finished strong last year. And you got to talk about that. Like, hey, you know what? Since such and such date, like they're basically a 500 team. This bodes well. This is more reason why you feel good about 2024. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Like games, like I, I said earlier, not for playoffs sake. They matter, but games matter. Wins and losses still matter. You still want to win. I want these people winning. I don't want a bunch of losers on my team, right? I want them to still win and compete. So, so yes, they, they matter in that sense. And if they can at least finish strong, like you're talking about and say, like, Hey, you know, we were 62 and 68. Well, actually, I guess they would have been 59 and 67, but you know what I mean? Like they, they bounce back and they're now a 500 team and we finish the season strong. Here's why we feel more confident about 2025. I'm cool with that. Don't you dare start talking playoffs and wild card, though, Jim. Don't you do it to us. Here's We've the been thing. through enough this year. We've been 16, through enough for three decades. 16-game stretch. You win 11 of these. Back to 500 on September 12th. I'm embarrassed to put this clip up now for the series preview. Can the Pirates still make the wild card? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if the wild card's in reach, but like, hey, 11 and 5 over these next 16. Let's go that 11 cool. and 5. Let's that would be that. cool. And, and then you know what we'll be doing? Then we'll be, be, we will be believing again. <laughs> no, no. We'll be seeing this is why you should have done more of the deadline. And <laughs> Hold on. You're yeah. not telling me. You're not telling me that. If on September 12th, NS9 Live, we're sitting at 73 and 73, we're not going to have a glimmer. We're going to have a glimmer of hope. You feel, we'll go, I mean, I guess if you're saying that's going to happen, I don't feel. But if we're 73 yeah. and 73. September 12th, NS9 Live, we're going to be 73 and 73. Yeah. Here's the thing. Everyone that's listening to us right now, you know how we are. We're absolutely, we're back. We're so back. If oh, we'll be back. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, here but we go. For one, it's not going to happen. And for two, when you put true perspective on it, things still have to go your way because the Padres are still so good. The Diamondbacks are so good right now. I'll give you this. Like the Braves, the, the Mets, they've kind of cooled down. This is what that 10 game, actually it was 11. Was it 10 in a row? That was more than 10, wasn't it? No, I think it was lost, lost just 10 in a row. It was 10 yeah. in a row, but it was like 12 out of 13. It was 11 of 12, 10 in a row. Yeah. But like Vineo that's why says, that was so impactful. Vineo says here, Grand All yesterday said we just, we just got to keep believing. You know what? True. For the sake of Yasmani, we will still continue believing. 
Exactly. And then like Nola says, 16 game stretch with studs like Feigl, Hermann, and Jake Woodford. Billy McKinney, G1 Bay, and Brian De La Cruz roaming around the outfield. It could happen. 